We all know what a tribute band is, don't we? Um, you know, Elvis emulators have been around forever, even when Elvis was alive. Unless you're one of the people who believe he still is. Uh, we had ABBA duplicators and they're all around the place. Uh, well, equally there are tribute calculators, aren't there? Um, HP made their own. Chuck was just talking about the newer 27S, which was a tribute to the original 27. Uh, it, the original 27 was quite early on, and it had scientific and technical functions in it. Uh, and then much later on, the 27S uh, also had scientific and technical functions on it, except it was an RPN machine. Boo hiss. Um, the 35S was meant to be a tribute to the HP 35, except it wasn't a copy of the HP 35. It was a model that was up to date, doing roughly to calculation what the 35 did when it was came out. Uh, they've made the HP 15C limited edition. Uh, it wasn't just the edition that was limited, it, it was its behavior that was limited too. <laughs> um, now Swiss Micros are making tribute calculators. I mean, that's, that, I don't think you'd mind if I call them tribute calculators. It's, um, and there's a guy called Alex Gaza on eBay who is selling an assemble it yourself kit. I don't know if any of you have seen it or has anyone got one. Uh, he's got a 41 kit, a 15C kit, and a 16C kit. Uh, and you can buy them for £69 plus postage from Mexico. And if you can't be bothered to put them together, he will put a 41 together for you for another £20, but not the others. So I'm looking forward to someone in the club getting one of those, but they are clearly tribute calculators. Uh, his eBay page even shows what it looks like inside. Uh, all right, so now today's is a tribute presentation. Bob Prosperi, who was way desperately hoping to get here, didn't get here. Uh, Jake and Eric were at HHC. Anyone else here was at HHC 2000? No. Um, oh, right, yes, of course you were, yes, right. Uh, and he gave a very nice presentation uh, on a new calculator coming from Swiss Micros. Since he can't be here, I'm giving his talk. But I'm throwing in a few comments of my own, as you can see right now. So tribute to Bob. Thank you, Bob, for having prepared this talk for me. And I, I'm just adding bits to it. And of course, a tribute to Swiss Micros. Thank you so much, Michael and David, for all the calculators you've made for us. Uh, they allowed Bob to present the DM32, which doesn't really exist yet. So thank you for letting him do that. And Michael, thank you for being here. So thanks very much. End of tributes. Right. This is Bob's talk. This is his first page. And he thought it was a really neat joke. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody knows what an Odran is. Uh, except you, of course. It's like All right. Drum, isn't it? It. Quite possibly, yes. The original HP 32S was called Leonardo, as in Leonardo da Vinci. The HP 32S 2 to which I'll come in a moment, they decided to cut his name in half. They cut the Leo off. I have no idea why. This calculator was codenamed Nardo, without the Leo at the front. Well, Bob's joke was that because we're all reverse poles, well, I am anyway, um, it should be called Odran, spelt backwards. But, but he wasn't very happy that people didn't get the joke. <laughs> anyway, this is what Swiss Micros are working on at the moment. A DM32. They're using the same... Oh, I probably haven't got one. That's the only calculator I haven't brought with me. Um, Oh, it's in another box. Anyway, they are using the 42 layout. Oh, thanks. Right. To make a 32 model. It's a fully compatible with the 32S2. Well, fully compatible means it's got the same functions. Uh, we'll come back to whether it gives the same results later. Uh, it's built on the same platform that they've already used for other models, so, so they're not needing to build a new platform. Uh, it's enhanced uh, to use this platform's extra features, bigger screen, a nice keyboard, other features that we'll come to. However, it is not an exact copy of the 15C. It is new software written to make it as similar as possible. 
it is not as slow as a 32S2. You might have guessed. And it's not as memory limited as a 32S2. Again, um, the 32S2 was built on the same platform uh, as the other Pioneer models. Uh, it was fairly limited, but then that was back in the time. Right. Now, my bit here. Um, the original 32S, which I've already shown you, was one of the members of a large family of calculators. Uh, again, Chuck has mentioned others. Uh, there was the 20S, which was a, a basic, non-programmable uh, algebraic model. There was the 21S, which was a brilliant statistics calculator. It really was great. Unfortunately, it was not well marketed, so people outside of HP didn't know about it. It was marketed to us, and we all turned our noses up at it because it was an algebraic model. They also made the 22S, which was algebraic, and it was a specifically equation-oriented calculator. It had a bunch of equations built in, and you, whereas you, you had the solver that was put in some models, this had the solver automated. You could pick a equation from its library and then just run it. And you could enter your own equations. So, so that was a very good idea. But again, it wasn't properly marketed and it wasn't RPN. But then if you're doing equations, well, equations are written in algebraic mode. So what do you expect? The 32S was the low-end RPN model in the same series. Um, there was, of course, the 42S, which was the high-end algebraic model in the same series. And we've already got the DM42. Thank you. Um, the 32S2 was... 27S as well. Oh, that was the 27S, but I'm not mentioning the 27S because um, it was algebraic only. We will come to the 27S in a while. Okay. So they had this lovely little calculator, uh, which had more features than you'd expect, but it was still simple. Uh, it had only one shift key. Uh, and then they did an upgrade on the Pioneer family, and they had more memory. So they said, what will we do? We will make a 32S2, and we will shoehorn into it as many extra features as we can possibly think of. Um, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, it had two shift keys, which detracted from the simplicity of the original one. Uh, it came in two color versions. There was a time when somebody at HP, marketing defeated the engineers. The engineers always said blue and orange, or blue and yellow. That means there's no problem, they're visible even in quite poor light. They will be distinguishable to people with standard color blindness, because there's no blue-green, uh, which was one of the few problems with the HP67. But I don't think many people complained. I think they chose a blue and a green that were distinguishable even to people with, with, with color vision problems. Um, anyway, they had gone over to orange and pale blue, which was bad enough here. Then they brought out a later model using the same colors as the HP48G, just as they changed the 48SX colors to this. Uh, so so that it's lilac and teal, I think, those are the colors. Anyway, if it's dark, you can't tell the difference between the colors. But it's really fashionable, and it's really in, and marketing is sure that more people will buy it because the colors are different. Um, sorry? <laughs> well, I had to get one of each. Oh, well, well, you, you can see I've got one of each, if not more. Um, I actually wrote a guide to 32S. I don't know where it's got to. It's lying around somewhere here, a book. Is it? Yeah. Are you sh oh, so it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was so taken with the 32S, and I was allowed to play with one early on. I wrote a book for students about it. Um, it was different from my 41 books and 28 books, which really went into the technical details and synthetic programming and so on. This was just a straight manual for students. This was the most affordable RPN calculator available, uh, and I really hoped that students would like it. Uh, I published it with synthetics, and synthetics were going through a bad patch, and uh, I think they didn't bother to tell the printers that a sigma sign needs to be uh, printed in a special font, so sigma signs were missing and so on. So I've got a box full of these books which 
but I'm not quite sure what to do. I think the best thing to do is to rewrite it for a new calculator that I'm talking about. Um, I, I got quite keen on the 32S2. I actually went to Corvallis and talked with the people who were designing it, and they were they didn't have a real one to show me, but they were very enthusiastic about how many more features they'd managed to squeeze into it. Fractions, which they hadn't had on calculators before, and they were so pleased with their idea that they didn't need to change the keyboard, you just press the, the decimal point key twice and you got a fraction. They were so pleased with it. Um, and they had squeezed in the equation feature from the HP 22S into the 32S. Now, nobody seems to talk about this, but that means this was both an algebraic and an RPN calculator. Because if you wanted to do RPN calculations, you did RPN calculators. If you wanted to do an algebraic calculation, you simply entered equation mode, and you didn't have to use variables. You could just take, type bracket 4 plus 2 close bracket times something, divide something, open bracket, and so on. In other words, you could do algebraic calculations on an RPN calculator except they didn't actually tell you that that's what it did. Um, they had some conversion functions on it. Um, and they had also written a brilliant polynomial solver up to fifth uh, of power polynomials, and they couldn't squeeze it in. And they were really very unhappy. Do we drop fractions? Do we drop conversions? Do we drop equations? What do we do to get polynomials? We can't do any of that. We will put the polynomial solver in the manual. So there is a polynomial solver up to fifth degree uh, in the HP 32S manual. Um, and it takes up nearly all the memory. If you put that in, you can't do very much else with it. Um, so I would really like a future 32S, maybe this one to have it in it. But you've said it's almost impossible to build more things like that in. So we'll probably just have it as an equation in this manual. But it'll be an equation that you can store because we've got so much more memory in it. If anyone likes polynomial solvers, anyway, I don't know how many people need them. Uh, we had agreed that not many people needed them, and that was the bit that they dropped. OK, this is back to Bob's talk. So we've already said what it is. Why make a copy of the 32S2? We've got a copy of the 42. We've got a copy of the 15C. Why do we need the 32S2 copy? Well, the goal is to have simpler and more accessible RPN model, but with a full set of math functions um, in the current shape, easy to learn and easy to use programming. Well, all those are really features of the 15C, but the 32S has a slightly different feel to it. Um, it's got unit conversions, which the 15C doesn't. It's got binary math. Um, and Anyone who buys a 32S DM32 will probably soon go out and buy a 42S, so I'm sure that, 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 that's also a, a thought. Um, so what else could we copy? The 20S, 21S, and 22S, I, I've just said how wonderful they are, but they're algebraic, so why bother? The 33S, well, uh, well, well let's not bother about the 33S. <laughs> It's really nice to look at. Marketing beating engineering again. You know, swan uh, wings and so on. The 35S is probably a pretty good calculator if only the keyboard was really good and if only they got rid of the bugs. And if only they would put polar to radian conversions and radian to polar conversions in. Uh, what happened there uh, was that HP contracted a Chinese company to write the programs for it. And they didn't actually specifically put R to P and P to R in the contract. So the Chinese didn't do it. This is a problem HP have had several times uh, when they contract a Chinese company to do something. The Chinese company does exactly what they're told and not a bit more. So example, uh, uh, the 12C Platinum does not have brackets in it. Although it has an algebraic mode, it does not have brackets in it. Well, obviously, you don't need to tell someone if you're building an algebraic calculator, you need brackets in it. But mm -hmm. HP didn't tell the Chinese company, so the Chinese company said, all right, scratch that, we will save a few dollars and we'll not pay an employee one day to add brackets to it. Um, 
and then they had to redo the 12C with brackets. So now, now if you buy a 12C platinum, you've got brackets. Um, so, all right. The 35S, but we've just heard from Moravia that maybe they will do a new 35S. Uh, and anyway, it doesn't fit this shape very well. So thank you, Michael, for doing this. And uh, we'll, we'll see what you'll do next. Uh, we'll come back to that. What about the most annoying features and limits? Um, I think we can come those, to those in questions if we've got time for questions, because I'm going on and on and on. Um, but there are some features you would like sorted out. I'll come back to those in a moment anyway. The DM32 was supposed to be a secret. I promised I wouldn't say anything about it, but uh, it's already on video. Um, uh, thanks to Logan West, who, who got one, made a video, uh, and I don't know whether you allowed him to do this, Michael, or not, but he did it anyway. <laughs> did you let him do this video? Yes, I sent him the unit. Yeah. Ah, all right, so it's okay. Good, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's built on top of the DMCP. Uh, I'm going to try to speed up a bit, so I'm not going to say everything. Um, this will, of course, be available, uh, and you look at the video. 17.15, I've got 15 more minutes. Oh, all right, we'll manage. Um, it, it, it's a proven, very good so uh, hardware and good software, lovely display. Uh, those of you who have been members of HPCC will probably remember Hodge's Law. David Hodges, years and years and years ago, said the cheaper the calculator, the better the display. On a really cheap HP model like this, it's only a one-line display, so even if it's dot matrix, it's much more readable than a two-line dot matrix. The dots are bigger, the contrast is better. Uh, well, with the DM32 and with modern uh, display units, that's no longer true. You can get a really good display unit on something like the DMCP platform. Um, we're going into the insides now. Uh, which chip is being used, how much flash there is, uh, there is over 256 kilobytes of RAM for applications. Well, the original 15C, or others made like it, didn't have quite that much memory. Uh, it's got a USB connector. Uh, it's using 40 nanometer technology, but there's some step down. <laughs> because it's written using, going from scratch, and it, doesn't use the tricks that HP engineers and software people could exchange. It's not exploiting the chip quite as well, so it's two times current speed, but still good. Uh, it may achieve some better speed on batteries as well as on USB. If, if you're using it on a USB, then it runs faster. That's... Um, oh, does this work? No, it doesn't. Okay. The owl. Apparently someone at Swiss Micros likes owls. Um, and, and some of their keyboards, if, if some of their uh, units, if you take apart their prototypes, they've got all sorts of owls on them. Lovely. Um, okay, functional enhancements. It's using uh, the Intel floating point library, so 34-digit precision. I don't know if you need it, but if you bring up Pi, you will get Pi to 34 digits. Um, an enhanced show, this is what the picture is showing. If you press show, it now comes up with a little box and it needs two lines to show all 34 digits. Um, but I don't think that, that affects the functionality. What it does affect is that you get slightly different results from the original 15C. More RAM, uh, and as I said, this model is not finished yet. Uh, they're looking at ways to double the number of global labels. I would imagine that's just by pressing a dot before the number, but you'll tell us later, I guess. Uh, global variables and local variables. Well, we didn't have local variables on, on the 15C originally, um, but it requires more work. Um, it's got function preview. Hooray! Um, the 32S and S2, if you pressed a key down and held it down, it did exactly what the 41C did. It showed you what function you pressed. When you let go, it carried out the function. So if you'd pressed the wrong function, well, bad luck. You were told that you'd pressed the wrong function, but you couldn't do anything about it. Um, because they hadn't had 
I don't know if it was the expertise or the space in RAM to put in the 41C cancel feature. You press a key and wait a moment, it tells you what it is, and then it says no. Well, finally, the 34 uh, from Swiss Micros has got that feature. You press a key, it tells you what it is. So that's useful in user mode, for example. You keep it down, and it cancels. Thank you. <laughs> Loads of other functional enhancements, uh, customizable function keys. There's a new top row, um, after all. Extra row. What do we do with it? One of the biggest bugbears of the 32, uh, and that's one reason for having asked you about them, is that if you're in a program and you want to single step forwards or backwards, you've got to press a shift key every time you press the single step forwards or backwards key. That's ridiculous. You want to single step through a program. Press, 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 press. I want to go to step 15 from step 10. I want to press it five times. I don't want to have to move my finger around the keyboard. So the idea is to dedicate two of these keys to the straightforward up and down keys, so you can single step. There are ideas about what to do with the other keys, and in any case, they're going to be reassignable. Um, you can capture an LCD screen and send it somewhere. Uh, you've got, uh, it, you plug it into USB on a PC or a Mac, and you've got drag and drop access, uh, updating, and so on. Uh, there's an on-off screen. Uh, I absolutely love Barbarella. Uh, but there's a whole range of these that cycle through. And you can simply drag and drop extra images onto it if you like. Um, Built-in help. Um, it's not in there yet, is it? But there will be help just as on the 42 model. Um, okay. There is something called a state file, which you can pick up. So if you're going to do something dramatic with your 32, like clear everything uh, or, or lose it or whatever, you can create a, a state file which you can then transfer to your own com other laptop or computer or even to your mobile phone. And it's clear text and it tells you the state of the machine. So not only can you transfer it electronically, you can even write it down. Um, the state file is a wonderful extra thank you. Um, and you can put comments in it. How compatible is it? It'll run existing programs, obviously. Uh, the results will be different because of the higher precision. Uh, but if you just want the result to the same precision as the 15C, unless you're doing something very specific, like working with the uh, trig values of very, very small angles, or calculating the, the hyperbolic cosine or sine uh, of small numbers, then the results will be the same. If you want to work to, on trig functions with very small angles, and there is a specific science that does this, spectroscopy, uh, where you shine a light and reflect it off at a minute angle, so as to separate out a, a spectrum, then you might need very small angle values. In fact, I first came across HP calculators when I was a student and the spectroscopy department at Imperial College was saying what a wonderful new div discovery had been made, the 35. And then years later they told me, oh, by the way, some of the angle features were wrong. Which is pretty bad if you're actually working out on a spectrum, but you change the angle a bit and it comes out right. How fast is it? Well, I just said two times from what Chuck said, but there it says 65 times. What did Chuck mean by two times? I think he meant that it runs on two times faster on the USB, doesn't it? No, what he meant is that this is a new hardware platform compared to the DM42 and 41X. Oh, thank you. This new hardware is twice the speed of the old oh, hardware. That was the internals that I was showing. Okay, right. Much faster. Prime factoring. Three minutes down to 1.5 seconds. Okay, uh, I'm getting one just for that. Oh, I've already got one. Oops. <laughs> so many thanks to Michael for your passion and for demanding quality from these things. You, you give us really good keyboards. Um, uh, to David, please pass our thanks on to David for, for, for the wonderful software. Uh, 
Amy for the improved graphics and the help and docs. Thanks. Uh, this was written by Bob, so he's thanking Joe Horn, uh, Gene Schwartz, Jake, Gene Wright, Gene Wright sorry, yes, uh, myself, and Logan for running tests on it. And he has a special mention for Joe, who is able to find absolutely incredible bugs. He found a bug that when you pressed a shift key, either of the shift keys, the accuracy in fraction disp display, there's a fraction display mode, changes. Now, that's a bug. Okay, you find it. But Joe worked out why, how it changes. It changes depending on the value in the top register of the stack. Uh, so he could just tell the guys what was going wrong and they could fix it. Um, before finishing his talk, Bob asked people what other models should be considered. Well, we've gone through the algebraic Pioneer models. We, we aren't very keen on those. Um, there is a demand for a DM48, but it's probably not going to be possible to squeeze it into this package, is it? That would be a whole new project for you guys, wouldn't it? It needs a more. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's something that people would like. But uh, at the moment, you can't get it. And uh, you just have to go on eBay or somewhere else or find a friend who's got several spare 48s lying around and, <laughs> and get one. Um, Semi-clones which take an item that HP made and modify it. Well, this is what Chuck was talking about. Um, Bob would love an HP 27S, which gives RPN instead of algebraic. I absolutely agree with that. So that's something I've added to Bob's talk. And my point is that there already exists such a model. The HP 200LX palm top has got a built-in calculator which is the same as a 27S, except that it's got an RPN mode too. So if you really, really, really want an HP 27S with RPN mode, go out and buy a second-hand HP 200LX. Or fall on your knees before Michael and say, please do that next. <laughs> and he'll have to go to David and say, can you squeeze RPN mode into something that looks like a 27S? Well, that's our dream. So thanks again to Bob who actually wrote this talk. Thank you to Swiss Micros for making these things and for letting me talk about it. And thank you all for listening. Yeah, I just wanted to, well, first say thank you for presenting the DM32 and just some uh, notes to uh, you know, in the presentation it said that uh, it uses a new CPU, uh, not as with the DM42, and that is actually because uh, the chip shortage, uh, there was a big problem to get the, uh, the CPU STM32L4, which we use in the DM42, which uh, now, uh, they said it was possible to deliver by 2027, uh, <laughs> the next batch. And, but fortunately, uh, ST Microelectronics uh, came out with a newer generation last year, the STM32U5. This is what you uh, already mentioned, which. Um, is, is a lot more power efficient, runs with uh, uh, up to 80 megahertz on battery. Um, well, although we might throttle it to 48 or whatever, it's just a lot faster than the 27 megahertz, which we use on the DM42 right now. And as Vodlek mentioned, uh, the Voyager series, the DM15, uh, in the credit card size, was actually the first first uh, uh, generation, and that had the uh, from NXP the LPC1115, which has actually only 64 kilobyte of flash. And uh, Chuck, you mentioned. Uh, 
yeah, what, what would be next and uh, wouldn't take so much more to uh, use the same electronics. The thing is, uh, in there, it's also, it's an, we're running an emulation, of course, with the original ROMs. And so that was fine with the 64 kilobyte and the original ROM, which HP had, was very efficient, very small. and. Uh, reprogramming this, which we've now done with the DM32, or actually David has, uh, so with also the Intel floating point library behind it, takes a lot more than 64 kilobyte of RAM. But um, that CPU, the LPC1115, is end of life by this or next year. So we're making a new version of it with the STM32U5 uh, in it, so which uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, so since we soon have the 32 and all its components, uh, which are uh, gives us the option to do whatever we want. And unlike HP or Moravia, we know what's behind it. And so we can do whatever we want, and like a 27 or, yeah. Uh, so after the 32, and of course the uh, WP43, which is actually uh, coming soon, and well, it depends a little on um, on how long it takes them to finish the firmware, but. This is a WP43. Um, well, you can pass it around. You can turn it on and it works already. Um, so this one is the WP uh, team they use from like from day one when the uh, DM42 came out. They used the DM42 to develop their software on it. So they put stickers on it as with the HP 70, no, 30, what it was. And yeah, they asked me, uh, could Swiss Micros uh, do this for real, like print uh, the buttons and how it should be? Yeah, of course we can. Uh, and, but now since the L4, which is in the DM42, uh, isn't available. Well, now it is again, but uh, we already moved to the U5, and we don't. And it's much better anyway. Uh, so uh, this version still has the L4 in it, as with the M42. But the real thing will have the U5 with a lot more memory, twice as much flash memory, and. Instead of 128 kilobyte RAM, it has 768, so way more. And is that the same price point, Michael? In terms of for you to buy the chip, the chip is um, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, just mm -hmm. maybe a little more, but um, yeah, I mean it's not a big difference. Maybe one dollar or so difference. So, yes, with the STM32U5, the first one will be the uh, DM32. Then, uh, well, also, I mean, this one here, uh, the DM32, uh, maybe you want to pass around, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, excuse me? This is lovely. This is really superb. Yeah, the, the, this is the same as the uh, DM42 and DM41X. It's the same platform, same hardware. Yeah, sort of round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I like it really well. Just, just <laughs> hold on to it. What is it coming out? The 32? This one here. So this is the WP43 uh, um, after the DM32. Um, depends a little also on on the on the team so first now this one is still with uh, with the L4 CPU and so what we have is the what we call it DMCP this is a 
baby, DM calculator pl platform, which is like an OS, and then we have the program running on top of it, like on the DM42, it's the Free42 software from Thomas Aachen, and on the DM41X, it's yeah the uh, HP41 emulation, which, which runs on top. So we have this DMCP, as we call it, and so David now is uh, working on the DMCP5, as we call it, which runs on the U5 CPU. And that'll take David a few more months to finish, uh, hopefully by end of February or something. Uh, that should be finished, and then we can uh, release the DM32, and shortly after, uh, the WP43 should be available too. Yes? I heard some rumors that there was some disagreement on the naming. <laughs> yes. Is that, is, is that resolved yet? Yes, that's resolved. Uh, it's WP43, no S at the end. Yes. I didn't want an S at the end because it's like DM42 or DM32 and S, it's like, yeah, what, is it that much better or no? I wanted the same like naming convention somehow. And I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it says WP. And I mean, it's their firmware, they support it, they, it's their baby, right. But it's a Swiss Micros product, yeah. So, as Vodlik said earlier, uh, the credit card size uh, DM15 was the first unit, and actually he has a very old unit with like the layered uh, PCB. Uh, later models had like the stamped uh, titanium housing, which are, I think, nicer. And also the keyboard got nice or got a little better, but still it was just a foil with domes, and. What we want to do next is actually uh, the same form factor, the credit card size, but like three millimeters thicker with real buttons, like a plastic part on top. And with the U5 inside, also with a, a USB-C connector, with a fat uh, connectivity. And oh yeah, and by the way, uh, the, the STM U5, CPU or also the L4 has a USB stack already inside, whereas the Voyager series had an extra chip, like a USB serial chip or a bridge, and it was only able to act as a CDC, like a serial uh, port, um, where the DM42, the L4, and the U5 they have a real stack, and on the DM42 and also TM41X, all we have implemented there is uh, the um, mass storage device. Uh, so, but with the U5, we'll also have a host mode, which will allow us to uh, make devices which we can attach to uh, the calculator, like uh, a printer or like uh, uh, <coughs> collecting data or whatever, so we'll see what. We'll, we'll Are you using a USB-C connector for that? Yes, the the new platform uh, with the new CPU. Yes, will have uh, USB-C. Now this uh, DM32, they're still with the old uh, electronics, which has the micro USB connector, but we'll move on to USB-C. Yes. So, and the, the mass storage is a separate chip, I understand? Separate no, no, that's built in into the CPU. Oh, I thought you had oh, oh yes, yeah, that's right. Device. Yes, 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 yes. So that's the storage itself, yes. Uh, I thought you were talking about the USB functionality. Well, what was the reason for putting that off chip? Um, because uh, uh, there isn't enough flash memory in, inside the chip. It just comes with uh, one megabyte flash, which we use for the uh, for the program itself. Right. And actually, with uh, 
we uh, need that chip because uh, to offload the Intel floating point library, the, the uh, lookup tables, like one and a half meg megabytes, are oh. only the Intel floating point library. That's why you only have like six megabytes uh, of flash for the FAT partition. The chip itself is actually eight megabytes. So this, for the DM32, you did sort of what Thomas did with the 342. It's a, it's a rewrite? It's exactly, yes, yes. Now, David has done this uh, by himself, yeah, all, all, everything. Well, actually, it was quite interesting how he did it. So he had, um, he actually made a, a web interface with uh, an emulator running and the simulator running and compared the two output. And as soon as there were, was a difference, it was highlighting. So the, uh, all the mentioned uh, testers they were like trying and hacking in stuff and all kinds of, uh, and so uh, they were like reporting bugs if there was a difference. Of course, at some point, uh, the difference was due to the higher precision. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that helped a lot to make it as close as possible to the original calculator. Yeah. So, but now we have all these uh, program parts uh, which we can put together like Lego. And so we're thinking, yeah, uh, like a Voyager series, first credit card size, and then also the original size, which will allow us to make not only emulators, but also like a 15C with Intel floating point library behind it, or a Voyager, or a, a, a landscape version of the 32, or 17 or 27 or whatever it's will come um, and we're happy to take all your input and since you have your own code now it's easy to, you don't have to <coughs> since it's not hard coded to a specific processor when, uh, when no 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 this is real source code of course yeah which uh, a function library basically yeah calculator. yeah exa exactly yeah no so yeah so we can put the pieces together like lego and yeah and the code is uh, shared between different designs. So you, uh, if you have a particular function mm -hmm. which is uh, replicated mm -hmm. in another calculator, mm -hmm. you can just uh, like Lego. Mm -hmm. code yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much like function blocks. Yeah, I mean that's source code. And well, I'm not saying it's easy, but David does the magic. He's just incredible. And he maps it to the key as well. Yeah, um, what else? So, I don't know if anybody of you has uh, uh, an older or like an early uh, model of the DM42. We had some quality issues there recently. Uh, we came out or uh, with a, a, like there's the PCB and it has a foil with metal domes on it. And so uh, if we offered those, kind of free, uh, free shipping and uh, and uh, it, they cost 10 francs, but you get uh, like a, a discount coupon for 10 francs. That's just that not everybody just orders one. Uh, so, but I, I have some here if anybody uh, needs, yeah, sure. We have a, yeah. We have a beta, is it? Right, absolutely. Sometimes it misses the keys. Yeah, so yeah, that beta. helps a lot. I thought it was just me. Like no, 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 no. This got, um, actually, the difference is that th these foils with the domes, now they come sealed. And before they were just like flying and they had like from the oxygen. Yeah, oh, just, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I have a bunch of them here. And oh, okay. sure. <laughs> is, is it okay to take a photo? It, it won't be put on. So fine, I'm sure, no problem, yes. Okay. You, 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 YouTube video of Sean Levy changed the foil anyway, so you have uh, Yes, there's uh, uh, actually in the Swiss Micros web shop, there's at the very bottom, there's this foil which you could order, but if you go into the descriptions, there's a, a, a link to the YouTube video where I show how to take the whole thing apart, clean the PCB, and then uh, 
how the foil is uh, uh, mounted to the PCB easily. Yeah. So that's what you have here is the, is the new foils. Right. So when is the, um, so is the 32 ready to go and you're just waiting for manufacturing time or CPUs or? Well, no, actually I'm getting the U5 CPUs uh, like in two or three weeks, like a few thousand pieces, and then they'll be sent to uh, the assembly, electronics assembly, and that's one part. And the other, of course, we have uh, um, uh, prototypes already, like uh, the electronics prototypes, but the last round is actually, I'm still waiting for the last round to come in. and. That's one thing, but uh, most likely uh, David's part is taking a little longer to finish the DMC P5. And uh, the hardware, the printing and everything, so Bill, my Chinese guy, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he, he, he has prepared most of the things. I mean, yeah, it's, as you can see, the, the printing is Really so far, so good and ready to go. Yes? The 43 is absolutely beautiful. You've done a wonderful job in the hardware, and uh, Walter and Co. have done a beautiful job. Well, thank you. Um, something to look forward to. Yeah. Yes, um, that's actually uh, Damie, Amy's achievement. Uh, he's a graphic designer, also lives in Switzerland. Uh, he works 40% for Swiss Micros. And he does, yeah, he is also, well, the owl uh, on the PCB is from him. And uh, well, initially the owl came from uh, a drawing of David's daughter, uh, like many years ago. And it was just uh, as a default off screen, like, and it should symbolize the calculator being asleep. But uh, somehow the owl got, a little more to it, so like the wise owl, and yeah, so it's like a mascot. <laughs> yeah. But I meant not only that the layout is beautiful, but it's just beautiful to have all these catalogs that you just yeah. want to check each one and play with it. Oh yeah, of course. That's um, that's of course uh, the WP uh, team who laid out all like which button goes where and what it's called. Yes, that's of course their effort or achievement. Yeah. Uh, we, we did have a, um, we have a chapter in the book from Walter that um, and we, did, we, we did end up taking about 20 pages out of the chapter of the book, um, which was uh, which functions and which versions of functions were in each of the platforms. And, uh, yeah. and we decided it wasn't that. Uh, the perfect place to put it. He can write his own book about it. So he can write his own book about it. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, he has already too, I mean, <laughs> at, or at least drafts. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.